Okay, so what we've done a lot this semester is connect what we're learning to the equilibrium constant. And so right now we're going to learn how to connect our E0 cell to our equilibrium constant, as well as delta G from last unit. So first off, what do we mean when we talk about delta G? What does the change in free energy represent? Well, for a chemical reaction, it is the maximum amount of useful work for that reaction. And so right now, looking at voltaic cells, this is the electrical work, and it is a negative value as work is being done on the surroundings. And so what we end up having is this lovely equation that is given to you on your AP um, packet, your test-taking packet, that delta G naught is equal to negative N F and then the E naught of our cell. And you can see there, N is representing the moles of electrons that are transferred. So if you look at your half reactions, your oxidation and reduction, and when you go to combine those two, it's the number of electrons that you cancel out. So how many moles of electrons were transferred? And then F is this Faraday's constant. And you can see it's right here, 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. And well, I'll show you a little bit more about that coming up, but again, this constant is given to you in your AP test packet as well. So what you can do here now is we can calculate the cell potential, um, I'm sorry, using the cell potential, we can calculate delta G. And so here's our standard fun zinc copper cell, the one that we built in lab the other day. And the voltage for this cell should be 1.1 volts. And so now I can basically do a plug and chug here. The only thing I have to know kind of going in is what is this N value? And a lot of times you can simply eyeball the reaction. Okay, zinc is going from 0 to plus 2, so it's losing two electrons. The copper is gaining those two electrons. So for this reaction, my N value is going to be 2. And so when I plug those numbers in, again, my Faraday constant is um, coulombs per mole. So when I take moles times that, the moles cancel out. And what you end up having is coulombs times volts in unit land is equal to joules. So my answer here comes out to be negative 2.12 times 10 to the fifth joules. Or, as we like to express our delta G, typically, it's negative 212 kilojoules. Does that make sense? It should. It's a nice big negative value. And we would expect that this reaction is, in fact, thermodynamically favored as written. We have a positive cell voltage, so that matches up as well. And so, yes, hip, hip, hooray, we can use our delta G values, like from our thermodynamic data, and we can use that to calculate cell potential as well. So lots of fun things can be done now that we know how to get cell potential and delta G and all these different ways to get K, which we'll see right now. We just mentioned what delta G is equal to, negative NF E of the cell. And last unit, we talked about delta G being equal to negative RT natural log of our equilibrium constant. So naturally, those two things are equal to each other. And so what we can do, solving for E naught of our cell, since that's the topic we're talking about, you see that it becomes negative RT over negative NF times the natural log of our equilibrium constant. Well, what is R? R is our ideal gas law constant, and typically, like on our packet, 8.31. F is the Faraday constant that we just talked about, 96,485. What is T? Well, obviously T is temperature, but remember, since we're talking about the standard state, then our T has to be 25 degrees Celsius, which of course is 298 Kelvin. So what we can do, we can A, get rid of our negative signs, negative over negative, and we can combine those three pieces of known information. And then typically, we like to express this through the eyes of our normal log, I guess you would say. But here is the equation that we typically see in a chemistry book. It's 0 0.0592 divided by N times the log of our equilibrium constant. 
this is not on the AP exam sheet, the equation sheet. However, this is given to you as well as this. So you could easily set those two equations equal to each other if needed and do some variable manipulation if that was something that you had to do. And what this is going to kind of take us into, if you remember when we talk about equilibrium, we usually end up talking about Q at some point. You know, has the reaction gone past the equilibrium point or is it not there yet? And so when we end up talking about Q with our E cell, then it's going to end up being what's called the Nernst equation. And even though they said they've taken it out of the AP exam, at least direct calculations with, it's still an important concept and we'll definitely look at it qualitatively. But essentially you'll be able to check, you know, if I manipulate the concentrations of the solutions, like when we were in lab, all the solutions were one molar. If I change that, I can get some different voltages and we'll be taking a look at that in the future. But for right now, calculate the equal equilibrium constant for this voltaic cell. Okay, it's our zinc copper cell. We got a 1.10 voltage. There's my equation. Again, I know that our, my N is 2 for this reaction. We talked about that earlier. So I want to find the equilibrium constant. So I'm going to rearrange that equation. And the log of K is equal to N times my E naught cell divided by 0 0.0592. So when I plug in that information, I end up with an answer of 37.2. Remember, that's not our K value yet. That's the log of K. So I have to do the anti-log of that. And when I do that, I end up with 1.58 times 10 to the 37th. Remember, what does that K value mean for us? Well, that's a huge number. And so those are the kinds of numbers we see with reactions that pretty much go to completion, like our combustion reactions in the past. So at equilibrium, we would definitely see pretty much all products for this reaction. Now, this is the reaction of the cell. And so they could ask you, hey, what's the equilibrium expression for this reaction? Well, remember, our solids are not included. So we have two aqueous ions, so you can call this a Kc even, and again it would be the concentration of zinc over the concentration of the copper two. And so at equilibrium there would be a lot of the zinc and hardly any of that copper as expressed by that huge K value. So what we see here is a little summation chart that kind of ties our E naught cell with our delta G and our K. And you can see the equations that link up the different subjects on these lines. And then there's this nice little chart. You know, a reaction is thermodynamically favored, spontaneous, in the forward reaction when you have a negative delta G, a positive cell voltage, and a K value that's greater than 1. It's not thermodynamically favored in the forward, but is in the reverse when you have the opposite. When you have a positive delta G, a negative cell voltage, and a K value less than 1. And then we'll be looking at this a little more in the future, but when we do reach equilibrium, again, delta G is 0, we've talked about that. Our E of our cell is 0 that we'll be looking at, and of course, k is 1. And then that last picture, I just added a little bit more information for you. Remember that we can still connect delta G to our calorimetry data as well, our enthalpy and entropy stuff. So that's just like a nice little summation tie-in, focusing on delta G and how much information we can get out of it. All right, hope that helps, and I'll see you soon.